Hi, this is Chris from CodeReviewVideos.com and in this video we're going to be taking a look at controllers, routing and a bit of command line. So the controllers and routing are quite well documented throughout the, uh, the documentation on the symphony.com website and the command line comes into it more as you're working behind the scenes. But if we jump into the Symphony demo application, we just do PHP app console and then just hit return, we can see that behind the scenes there's quite a lot of these commands that we're, uh, uh, that are available to us. Some of the more commonly used ones are cache clear. Uh, we also would be using debug of our router, sometimes debugging the container, but that's a bit more advanced. And then a lot of the doctrine ones get used quite frequently. So whichever ones that you're interested in, we just do PHP app console and then for example, cache clear, just exactly as it's uh, written here like that syntax router colon debug and then it will go off and do that command for us. Now whilst in the first video we looked at the Symphony demo application for the rest of this video series I'm going to be using my own application so we're going to create it now so we're just going to jump out of the Symphony demo application and we're going to do a Symphony Symphony <laughs> new intro and that's going to create us a new symphony project called intro so then we just need to jump into that intro directory and the reason for doing this is there's a lot of stuff in that demo application which is great and I do advise that you install a local copy especially if you're new to symphony uh, and you have a look around what it's doing and everything but once you're wanting to work on your own project or working in such a way that you don't want any of the demo stuff sort of hindering you it's best just to start a new project rather than trying to rip out their bits uh, and work in that way but just keep it there for reference so we're currently in the symphony demo project so i'm just going to do a new project from existing files again source files in a local directory and we've not yet configured a web server we're going to jump into code review development and then intro set that as the project route and just finish that and then we want to say open this in a new window and that will allow us to also keep the demo application open in the background and again as I mentioned in the first video it's exactly the same setup and that's quite reassuring things are always staying the same now even though this is a brand new project there are some things defined for us and this is both good and bad it's good because we can initially see that certain things are working as expected but it's bad because even when we first create a project we've got to do a little bit of tidy up so if we jump across here uh, we can see that we're in our intro project if we do php app console and then we do debug router we can see that there are already some routes defined for us so we've got this app example as i say uh, this is good because for the for our purposes we already have something configured for us but it's bad because if this is a brand new project you've got to do a little bit of tidy up um, before you can even get started so let's have a look at where that is coming from so that app example so we're going to app bundle controller default controller and we can see app example is there for us so that's our root our root is uh, a URL or a URI that we can go to so if we start up the server we will be able to actually jump up onto that and do uh, that URL and see our, our project so let's go across 127 not not and then oh got one too many slashes app example and we can see that we've got home page so if we jump back across we've got render it renders this file as you can see i've got a slight there uh, i've got a php storm plug in there for symphony but um it's saying that this lives in our default uh, forward slash index html.twig so if we go to resources views default and notice there's a views directory there that's, that's not included in that that's assumed um, so that's quite interesting or quite important to know about but that's basically the template that it's picking up so um, we'll look at templates just now Symphony uses a template engine called Twig. Twig is made by Sensio Labs, who also make Symphony. So as you can imagine, the integration is brilliant. Just do a Google for Twig, uh, twig.sensiolabs.org. The doc documentation is really good. And uh, there's also documentation on the Symphony site for Twig as well, uh, in terms of like more specific to Symphony integration. Honestly, using it is pretty straightforward. Uh, it, it's quite intuitive as to how it used we can how it's used sorry we can see that we're on an index html.twig i mean these file names can be anything uh, but generally you name it in accordance with whatever your controller action is called so we can see that we've got this default index uh, and in here we've got this block of body now this block uh, as it says is extended from the base inside the base we also have the block of body so that allows us for example we could create another page in here we could call it another 
HTML.twig, we could go into our controller and we could literally copy and paste the whole lot in here. Uh, just paste that out, change this off to another, uh, give this a different name, we'll also call this another. Uh, quite important that we have the action in there, but we, the, the start of your uh, controller name can be anything, sorry, your uh, action name could be anything. So it's, the convention is start off lowercase like that. Um, I think that's called uh, camel case. Yeah, so we go camel case, another what, whatever our name is, action, and then we just change this off to be another index. So that's going to go off to there. And in here, we could put in literally anything that we like. And again, that extends base. So we're making use of this base template twice uh, without really having to define any of that junk. Well, not junk as such, but like the co cookie cutter type stuff more than necessary. And so if we go back across here um, and then just open up another, assuming our server's still running, we can see that this time we get that uh, that junk that I've just typed in. But what's more interesting, I suppose, is if we go to, say, Get Bootstrap or um, Foundation by Zerb or whatever um, in here, if I can remember whereabouts the um, the bit is that we need. So we want to go into just this bit here uh, and we can nick the entire Bootstrap thing. Uh, we don't need the theme. We don't actually need the JavaScript at this point. But if we jump into the, the template, uh, so like the base template, we just drop in Bootstrap there. And then if we give our pages a refresh, we can immediately see that the bootstrap CSS has been applied. And again, it's been applied to that one as well. So that's like really cool. Immediately we've got bootstrap in there and Symfony's got quite decent integration now with bootstrap as well. Uh, but that's how quick and simple it is to get bootstrap involved. And the nice thing is from the template inheritance, like because we extend, um, we only needed to put it in once. And then we've got that functionality throughout our entire project. So what's quite nice is we could jump into the base template now and we could just add a little bit more style in. So we could say this goes into a class of container. And this is available to us because we've just put bootstrap in there. And then if we refresh this, we can see now that we're wrapped inside that container. Now, obviously, that's not the best styling um, in the world. Uh, I'm not a designer, but that's how quick and easy we, we can use a bit of extra bootstrap markup uh, and apply it throughout our project. So instead of seeing that, um, let's now look at adding in another controller. Uh, and we'll this time we'll use a controller that's got some um, parameters on it. So we'll just take a copy of the default controller and we'll call it our param controller, something like that. It doesn't really matter what you call it. Just make sure that the name here matches up with what it says there. If you're moving it out of the namespace or whatever, then do make sure that you yeah, update all that as well. So we'll just um, put in here uh, and then we'll go, our root will now be hello and then we'll say name. We also need to update this bit. So we'll just say hello uh, will be the name of this one, this root. And then because we've added in this name, um, this parameter, this is going to be available to us uh, in, as a parameter on this, this method. So we'll just call it name and then it will match up uh, and figure this out for us. Then we're going to render off and we're going to need to change this template up slightly. So instead we'll, we'll put this into a hello directory and we'll also call this name. The template will just be name. I mean, that, that's obviously not the best um, names and stuff in the world, but whatever, it's just to show that you can do whatever you like. And then we're going to put this inside an array. So we're going to have to pass in this name parameter to our template so that it gets rendered out properly. Uh, and we just call this name and this will be the, like the template uh, variable that we can access. And then we need to give it the, the variable that we want to put in there. We can, we can put in something static as well. So we could just, oh, hello is a, a terrible one, but we could say um, other name, or I don't know, other name um, will be world. Uh, and then we can pass in like one that's dynamic via the URL and one that's static. So this is, is missing as it says there. So what we need to do is just create a new view. So we're going to, because we put it into that hello directory, that hello subdirectory, we need to create one called name, name.html.twig. And then in here, easiest thing to do, just copy that bit out, paste that in. And again, we're just extending off. So this time we can do like h1, and we'll just do hello and then um, hi uh, and then well, we need double. Uh, and the first one is going to be our name parameter because that's the dynamic one. And then we're also going to do also, also hello. And then I think it was world, wasn't it? Let's just see other name. Sorry. So let's just put in other name. 
So what we should get now is whatever we pass in via the URL, we should be able to change it there, uh, but that one's always going to stay the same. So let's just jump across to our roots uh, and let's just quickly php app console uh, debug router and we should be able to see hello. Now we, we also take a parameter there, as you can see like these take parameters as well, but if we go to hello, oh we'll also need to start the server, uh, server run, and then so we go across here, hello there, and so you can see hi there, also hello world, that one was passed in and then we can like you know change it up to Dave or whatever, hi Dave, also hello world. So that's basically passing in parameters via the um, the method, the method call like so from the root, we just make sure that the name, uh, the, the variable name matches up. So it, I mean it could be anything there, literally anything, as long as it matches up and then obviously this has got to change a, a touch as well but because we've not changed the, the parameter that's uh, getting passed to the template, we've not changed anything on the template when we refresh this, that all still works. So uh, that's nice and dynamic, I suppose. Uh, this obviously is quite a basic example, but it becomes more useful. Say, for example, we had a blog that had blog post and we were passing in, like, so the, the URL might be something like, um, it, the blog post might be something like, let's just say blog, my blog post title and then what we could do is like if that was the variable so if we called this blog uh, post slug something like that we could get that do blog post slug and then use that to look in the database for a post with that slug and then we could pass that through as a variable so that's really how it starts to become more powerful